Today we're going to meet up with a group of men and women who gather weekly to socialize and compete in a sport that might look easy, but is often referred to as chess on ice. Join us as we check out the Blue Ridge Curling Club. Come on. Curling is a staple of my Mondays. It's something that I look forward to every week. You get to see a lot of familiar faces and, and get together with my friends in a nice relaxed atmosphere and uh, have a little friendly competition on the side. It's my favorite sport. <laughs> um, curling is a sport played on the ice. Um, it's Some people compare it to shuffleboard. We throw big 42 pound granite rocks across the ice back and forth at a target. It's been an Olympic sports since, oh gosh, for the last three Winter Olympics, I think. And we have a new club in Charlottesville. And it's, I mean, for us, a lot of fun. It goes all the way, the whole range of casual beer league to super competitive Olympic level athletes. So, so and so the point of the game is? So the point of the game is to score more points than your opponent by having more of your team's stones in the center of the house, which is sort of our target on the ice, than okay. the other team. So you score more points based on how many rocks you have on that target. Okay, so so first of all, let's start with, you have to prepare the ice. There's a, Talk about the setup before yeah. anyone can curl. Um, for us, we play on what's in the curling world called arena ice, uh, which means we share it with other sports. There okay. are facilities that are dedicated specifically to curling and their ice is prepared a little differently because they don't have to share. Right. Um, but we go on right after kids hockey, so we have to do some work before we're ready to get on the ice. Okay. Um, first they resurface with a Zamboni and that gets rid of sort of the surface scratches and stuff that are left by the previous sport. Okay. Then we pebble, um, which is basically a fine water spray that we spray across the ice surface and those little water droplets form, they freeze in little beads on the surface of the ice. Right. Which basically breaks the surface tension between the rocks that we're throwing and the surface of the ice. So right. it gives you some more control over your shots. It gives you a more predictable shot. Um, and it lets your rocks go that whole hundred and some feet down to the other side. Right. Um, we mount hacks into the ice, which allow us to push off and get that nice long glide that those beautiful athletes on TV have. <laughs> yeah, it's like a runner's block almost, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and, you know, we need all of our rocks. We bring out all our rocks. Um, and like most clubs in the States, we provide all of the equipment for our players. So we bring all the equipment out on the ice uh, and then it's ready to go. I curled because it looked like something fun to do on Mondays. <laughs> Me and my boyfriend got on the team and we were randomly giving two other people uh, we have a lot of fun. They're good. They did it last season, so it's helping us out. We're learning from that. And also just standing up on ice is impressive. Like, it should be a life skill. Don't be afraid. Uh, it's not by no means a normal motion if, unless you're doing lunges on your kitchen floor in socks. So, yeah, just, just come out, give it your all, and just kind of keep an open mind and, and be willing to, to come out and try new things. That's really all we can ask. I like to throw. You know, it's, it's a little bit of a higher pressure spot, I guess, but it's always fun to be able to try and score some points and, and uh, just be able to contribute. And it's something that I can really control on my own uh, versus the sweeping position, which is helping out a teammate, which is great too, but it's, you know, your one offensive spot to get to throw. So I really like that spot the best. So explain the positions, like what does everybody do to, yeah, to achieve so, their goal? So you have a lead, a second, a vice skip, and your skip. Um, and you throw in that order, so first, second, third, and fourth. Okay. Um, your lead, generally speaking, is responsible for guard shots. So you like a lead who has a lot of control over how fast they throw their rock and specific placement to sort of protect the house from your opponent's rocks. Okay. Um, a lot of times your second is called on to do takeout shots. So oh, okay. um, your second is someone who has to have a nice, strong, consistent weight um, who can kind of clear things out of the way for you. Um, and also your lead and second have to be really strong sweepers. So you're relying on your front end to be your sweeping muscle too. Okay. Um, and then your back end, your vice and your skip are sort of more of your strategy minds. Um, they're watching the ice, they're seeing how it goes, um, sort of planning a couple of shots ahead. Your vice is like your jack of all trades. They have to be able to set whatever up that you need, right. hoping that it lasts for the next couple of shots. Um, ideally, I play skip on my team here. I like to have to do nothing. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping everybody takes care of it before I get there. Um, but generally speaking, your skip is 
usually more experienced, uh, more of a strategic mind, um, and more of a finesse shot. So you don't, I as a skip don't like to have to come into a big mess of rocks in the house. I like to sort of know what the plan is. I like that rocks you, in the house. You count on it's everybody like... else to set it up for you. <laughs> that's, that's great. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about the club. Who? Who participates? This is a weekly, during the season, this is a weekly club. Yep. Who, who comes in and plays? Oh my gosh, all kinds of people. Um, it's one of the things that I like most about curling is how diverse it is. Um, and in Charlottesville and Virginia, where we don't have a lot of natural curling because we're a warmer climate, right. it's mostly people who have seen it somewhere, whether in the Olympics or, you know, they heard about it and they're curious. It's an understatement to say all kinds of different people. Um, and they don't have to have experience. No, no, absolutely not. And it's, I mean, it's another one of my favorite things about curling <laughs> is how welcoming the sport is to people who are new. The best curlers that I have played with who just outmatch me in skill a hundred times are the most welcoming and encouraging people that I've, you know, that I've ever gotten to meet and play with. So um, a lot of, what underpins the sport in its philosophy is growing and helping those people learn and and helping them find a place that's comfortable for them to kind of try it out and practice and you know the fellowship of that is really important to the sport in general but to us as a club specifically too. It's a fun time to come out and get with a group of people uh, every week. Uh, I'm an older person and, and to be with a bunch of very young people uh, to play in this sport it's, it, it kind of, I look forward to it. I almost look at them as part of my family. Well, it all started with the, uh, the Norwegian curling team in the Olympics. We, we thought we needed some kind of pants to go along with it. And uh, from the pants came the shoes and uh, it's just silly, we like to have fun. You can't find these clothes anywhere in town. You have to have them ordered. But uh, uh, fortunately, my team is very dedicated to the sport, so we all, uh, we all kind of pitch in together and decide what we want to wear ahead of time. The other thing about curling is that I think people think it looks easier than it is. I mean, yeah. I think you can, it's a tricky sport, but I think it looks easy until you get out there and try it. Yeah, it's um, definitely one of those sports that I genuinely think is attainable for people at all kinds of fitness levels. Um, but you don't realize how hard you're working until you're on the ice. It requires a lot of balance, right? Um, which moves your muscles and asks your body to do all kinds of things you're not used to when you're not used to walking on the ice. Yeah. Um, like the thing I do that's closest to curling in the rest of my like fitness life is yoga. You know, it requires strength and balance and attention to your body yeah. um, and consistency in in the way that you move, um, which I think is unexpected for people who haven't played before. Right, and strategy. It's yeah. like chess on ice, you say. Yeah. People say, chess on ice. <laughs> yeah, people like the chess on ice analogy. I think people like it because it makes it seem like they're extra clever <laughs> about their curling game. But um, but it's true, you do kind of have to think about what the other team's shots are gonna be. Is it a team that you've played? Do you know what their behaviors are right. like? Do you know what their shots are like? Um, when you look at the house and you look at the positions of the rocks, can you think ahead about how the next stone is gonna behave? Um, right. And so it is very much about thinking ahead and planning your shots in advance and, and knowing the personalities and skills of who you play with and against. Talk about the benefits of being a club. Yeah, um, well, for starters, it allows you to um, have some kind of control over the way that you form your mission, which is important, especially in, in a sport that's so much about growing and, and bringing new people in. It's important to be able to keep that as a focus. Right. Um, also, as a curler, it gives you access to all kinds of training and development as a player and as a team that you don't have when you're kind of just operating independently right. um, in a facility that happens right. to offer the sport. Um, so you can compete on a regional and national level if you're a club. Um, as an individual, you can pursue coaching certifications. Um, you can go to skills clinics. You can meet amazing curlers and work with them on your game. and. Um, you can go experience environments other than this. I, I mean, this is my home rink. I love curling here. Um, but it's really a fantastic learning experience to go somewhere else 
with a different set of people, different sets of skills um, right. to kind of develop your game in that way. Right, and you you travel, so you will sometimes compete nationally. Yes, <laughs> sometimes when I'm very lucky. <laughs> and, um, then, and then some people just come here to have a beer yeah. and see how they do. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's, to me, so wonderful to have both of those things in the same building, in the same league. Right. You know, we right. play with and against those people every week and we learn things from them and they learn things from us. And yeah. um, I mean, that's just, that's my favorite part is, is being able to have that kind of diversity and interest and skill and just see what the give and take is like on the ice. So how often do you all play? We play every week, once a week. Um, and we have three games on those nights. And we play two seasons a year. So we have one full league uh, that starts late summer, early fall, and one full league that starts in the winter. The start of every season, we do have Learn to Curl events. So if people are curious, um, it gives you an opportunity without committing to you know 15 weeks of something you've never done before. <laughs> and so if people want to get involved, what do they do? Oh my gosh, the easiest thing is just to come down here on a Monday night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I will be floating around looking for people to talk to about curling. <laughs> um, and then there's a Facebook page. Yeah, so we so have a Facebook page right now that's probably the most active. And then if you're ever on the downtown mall on a Monday night, come and stop in and have a beer and ask us questions and try it out. It's a it's pretty flexible, pretty flexible group. And what is what is your best advice to a novice curler? My best advice to a novice curler is it, it's just a learning environment and, and a fun environment to be in. So just kind of remember the curiosity and the interest in the fun. I am not good at all. No, I, but I have fun, which is the most important part. It's, it's great to come out with friends and, and co-workers um, on a Monday night and just do something different and have fun. I mean, when you first start, like the funny thing is like you get you're worried you're not going to make the rock all the way down the sheet and then like after like a few times you're like I have too much power I have too much power like you can't stop it so uh, but no I'm not losing sleep over it yet you know people see this in the Olympics and they're like oh who does that but we do and it's fun like I, t I tell people I do this and I get such a fun reaction and I get to talk about this sport and you know it's just something unique to be out here that that's great that Charlottesville has for us